Good morning, guys. Greetings in the name of Jesus Christ. How are you all doing? Today, we're going to get into, and this will be at 3 p.m. Central Standard Time, we're going to get back into Job and the um, several chapters of Elihu giving his opinion on the situation he has been witnessing. Now, I find it interesting that you don't really hear anything about him being there. Until this point in the book. I find that interesting. Where did he come from and who is he? And I have a theory. I don't know if it's true or not, but I have a theory. But we'll get into that in the video. <coughs> Excuse me. This morning we're going to be reading out of 2 Kings 25.30. And his allowance was a continual allowance given him of the king. A daily rate for every day, all the days of his life. In the New King James, it says, And as for his provisions, there was a regular ration given him by the king, a portion for each day, all the days of his life. Let's go up a few. Um, I think we'll start right here in verse 25. But it happened in the seventh month that Ishmael, the son of Nathaniel, the son of Elishama of the royal family came and ten men and struck and killed Gedaliah, the Jews as well as the Chaldeans who were with him at Mizpah. And all the people, small and great, and the captains of the armies arose and went to Egypt, for they were afraid of the Chaldeans. Jehoiachin released from prison. Now it came to pass, so this, this happened after that event, now it came to pass in the 37th year of the captivity of Jehoiachin, king of Judah, in the 12th month on the 27th day of the month that evil Merodach, king of Babylon, in the year that he began to reign, released Jehoiachin, king of Judah, from prison. He spoke kindly to him. This is the evil guy. He spoke kindly to him and gave him a more prominent seat than those of the kings who were with him in Babylon. So Jehoiachin changed from his prison garments, and he ate bread regularly before the king all the days of his life. And as for his provisions, there was a regular ration given him by the king, a portion for each day, all the days of his life. Now, there's an interesting side note to this. <coughs> we haven't even dipped into the book of kings involving mystery of Babylon. But if you do a little study, you'll start to see some more connections there in the book of uh, First and Second Kings. Now, the next chapter, I don't think, okay, it gives a genealogy. So that's, we have to stop it there at that one. That's, can't go any further there. Our devotion says, Jehoiachin was not sent away from the king's palace with a store to last him for months, but his provision was given him as a daily pension. Herein, he well pictures the happy position of all the Lord's people. A daily portion is all that a man really wants, we do not need tomorrow's supplies. That day has not yet dawned, and its wants are as yet unborn. The thirst which we may suffer in the month of June does not need to be quenched for in February, for we do not feel it yet. If we have enough for each day as the days arrive, we shall never know want. This is an interesting concept. Sufficient for the day is all that we can enjoy. We cannot eat or drink or wear more than the day's supply of food and raiment. The surplus gives us the care of storing it and the anxiety of watching against a thief. One staff aids a traveler, but a bundle of staves is a heavy burden. Enough is not only as good as a feast, but is all that the greatest glutton can truly enjoy. This is all that we should expect. A craving for more than this is ungrateful. See, in the wilderness, after the Lord took his people out of Egypt, and he fed them. He fed them with royal food. They complained. They, had, they actually had more than enough. And then he gave them meat, and they still complained. How many of us as Christians have a similar situation? We provide everything we can in our families or our, the people who are, we are providing for, friends or whoever, still complain. I 
I think it's a good thing to grow up poor. Then you learn to appreciate everything you have. How many of us are, are given or provided for? And complain. What we have to learn to do is look at our situation and see, do, do I have what I need? Do I have enough? And if we do, ask ourselves, why am I complaining against the Lord that I don't have enough if I can obviously see that I do? And this is a lot of people's state. Not so much Christians nowadays. I'm seeing that change in us. But it's the rest of the world. This is all that we should expect. A craving for more than this is ungrateful. When our Father does not give us more, we should be content with his daily allowance. See, he knows what's coming down the line. If he gives you more than what your daily needs are, how irresponsible are you going to be with it? Or is something going to happen that's going to take it away from you if you have more? But if you have just enough, that same situation may not take anything away from you. See, he knows these things we don't. When our Father does not give us more, we should be content with his daily allowance. Jehoiachin's case is ours. We have a short portion, a portion given us of the king, a gracious portion and a perpetual portion. Here is surely ground for thankfulness. Beloved Christian reader, in matters of grace, you need a daily supply. You have no store of strength. Day by day, oh, I can relate to that. Let me back up for a second here. I can relate to that. You have no store of strength. I don't. It takes the Lord renewing me every single day. And I'm glad for that. I'm happy for that. Day by day must you seek help from above. It is a very sweet assurance that a daily portion is provided for you. In the word, through the ministry, by meditation, in prayer, and waiting upon God, you shall receive renewed strength. In Jesus, all needful things are laid up for you. Then enjoy your continual allowance. Never go hungry while the daily bread of grace is on the table of mercy. We have everything we need every day. Now, people may look at our physical situation and go, well, but actually you need this, you need this, you need this. No, I don't. I've had them come to me before and say, you're in need of healing. No, I'm thankful for my infirmities. Well, that doesn't make any sense. A Christian should desire to be healed. Oh, if the Lord deems me worthy of healing, I'll take it. But I also know that being healed may cause me to go back into the pride that I used to be in. So I'm thankful for what I have because it actually has put me in a much better position to serve him. That doesn't make any sense. I don't know how you can think that. So, well, let's go look in the Bible. What does Paul say? And immediately they start to, well, Paul wasn't really an apostle. Oh, so you don't believe the word of God. That's the real problem. Don't you want more out of life? Nope. I have everything I want and need. More than enough, actually. Don't you want to be more financially secure? That seems to be the whole thing today. Everybody's talking about that today. No, I'm financially secure. I'm happy. What if it was all taken away? What if? something wrong with you? No, I just have faith. Nothing wrong with having faith. <clears throat> faith is for children. Do you have faith that that cold medicine you buy over the counter is going to help you? Do you have faith that your car is going to start every day? Do you have faith that your job is going to be there in order for you to make a paycheck? Do you have faith you're going to get that paycheck? Do you have faith you're going to make it down the highway safely? Do you have faith that your cell phone will always turn on and be available there for you to check Twitter and Facebook? Do you have faith that your family and friends will always be there? Do you have faith that there's food in the house? Do you have faith that the power will be on the next day? Do you have faith that the heat and the air will stay on? See, there's a whole lot of things to have faith in. There's a whole lot of things that we put our faith in. But the one that we should be putting our faith in, we don't. That's what people do. They, they make that mistake, that horrible mistake. 
And this isn't even the unbeliever. I'm talking about people who are professing Christians. Because they had never learned or were never taught who to put their faith in. Yet, they never realized they put their faith in things every day. Faith is for children. No, faith is for everybody. And so the point is, if we say we have faith, do we not look to the Father if we have faith? Sure we do. Do we not rely on the Lord and the Holy Spirit every day to teach us, to show us the truth, to open the Word up and reveal things to us? Sure we do. Do we rely on the Lord to refresh us with grace and mercy every single day? To give us the ability to share the Word whenever the opportunity arises? To give us the ability to walk with integrity, to do the right thing even when everybody hates us for it? Sure we do. We were coming down one of these deserted highways out here in West Texas. I mean, it was roads we'd never been down before, coming back from this, from Arizona. We'd never been on these roads before. Way out in the middle of nowhere. Speed limit was 65. We're doing 67. People were blowing past us. 80 mile an hour. Even out there on those roads, where there was, there was, there were several to, uh, po several points along there where we would drive for almost two hours and not see a single car. Great opportunity to fire that thing up and let it run, get home a little faster. No, we did the speed limit. A few miles above, that's it. We stayed at the speed limit. Then in the distance in the rearview mirror, you'd see that car coming. They blow past us like we were standing still. 100 mile an hour. It's not integrity. See, the Lord has to refresh us in those things every single day. He has to remind us of what the commission is every day and what he has given us every day and what he has given us to do every day. Every single morning when we wake up is that renewing and refreshing. I start these videos and I'm groggy and out of it. It's only a minute or two. And he has refreshed me to share with you just share with you what he's revealing to me in this word. And we go into the word and prove it. Encourage each other. Pray for each other. Lift each other up. And glorify our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. He enables us to do those things. He enables us to learn, to grow. He provides everything for us. Do we look to him and acknowledge him for that? What well, we're going to this morning... Because he is the God of all things. King of the universe. The God of all creation. The great provider. And we may look at some of the daily things that go on and think of them as something simple and easy and everyday and, and nothing to pay too much attention to. Not realizing It's very important to pay attention to them. We had a slowdown on the way out there. Traffic on the other side of the highway was stopped completely. Major accident. Major, major. The people that lived around there were reporting that they thought... The whole county, all the emergency personnel, the entire county were out there. We know the wreck was bad enough that there was an EMS person. This is These are two two-lane roads separated. One was set up higher than the other. The accident was so bad, debris from the accident went all the way to the opposite side of, the, of our two lanes, down the hill. We know for sure at least somebody's dog was flung free from one of the cars and somebody had pulled on the side of the road to stop to pick it up. And an EMS person I was walking down there. I think they were looking for people. The accident was very bad. That was at about 10 o'clock in the morning. 11 o'clock, I think. Traffic didn't start moving until 7 p.m. that night. 
I don't know what flew across our side of the highway, but I know that if we hadn't have pulled off and got gas when we did, we didn't need it. We just pulled off and got it anyway. We would have been driving right through there when that accident happened. Who knows what would have happened? We might have been involved in it. I don't know. I know the pickup truck, the brand new pickup truck that had pulled off to pick up the dog had damage. So it may be that they got hit by it. I don't know. That's the providence of God. You know, and I see this all the time. We, we go on, we've been on the road so much in our lives. I, I see this all the time. Wow, sure glad we stopped and got gas. Sure glad somebody needed a bathroom break. Sure glad we got tired and decided to pull off and take a break. Otherwise, we'd have been right here when this happened. And that's happened a bunch of times. And that's just one thing. There's so many others. Where he is constantly, constantly directing our paths and providing for us and looking out for us and protecting us. Let us give thanks to him for even the smallest thing. Because if every hair on our head is numbered, that he's watching every single thing that happens around us and making sure that whatever happens works to our good because we love him. Father, we come before you this morning in the name of Jesus Christ to give you praise, honor, and glory. To lift you up and to sing praises unto your holy name. Father, thank you. Thank you for your mercy and your grace and your great love. Uh, oh, whoops. I completely blanked out for a second there. Sorry. Father, thank you for this holy word and for this devotion. My apologies, Father. I had a bunch of thoughts going through my head at once. Thank you for providing for us. Thank you for reminding us that you provide for us. Every day, something new. There's so many people out there that have gotten caught up in this thing of, um, you get it and then it's all you after that. You know, No, it, Father, it's all you every single day. We can't do it on our own. We need you. We don't put our two and three year olds in the back seat and drive them around the block and then they take the keys and go and drive all over the place. That doesn't make any sense. We need you to provide for us every single day. And we're thankful that you do. Each one of us in our lives that you provide for us, you're always watching out for us. And and it, we always have enough, but Lord, I mean, you've been more than gracious with pretty much most of us, if not all of us. Some of us struggle, but when you really sit back and take a look at, at your life and what you have, it, you just you have so much more than what you really need. We only need food and clothes, and you give us so much more than that. So, Father, I am eternally thankful and grateful that you have blessed us so richly, not just in things needed, but in other things. That you watch over us while we travel. You watch over us while we're at home. You watch over us when we're doing things work-wise. Working in the yard. No matter where we are or what we're doing, you're watching over us. You're providing for us. You're taking care of us. Father, thank you. How can we not be grateful? But more than that, let us give thanks for the most important things. Faith. You give us faith. You strengthen our faith. Grace. You show us grace. And you build more grace on top of it. Mercy. You shower us with your mercy every single day. And salvation. Maybe that's why I went into that, because I was thinking about that. Salvation. This free gift you provide for us. I think sometimes we get so drawn into giving thanks for the material things, we forget to give thanks for the spiritual things. Father, let us do that today. But thank you for understanding, for knowledge, for wisdom. Thank you for peace, for joy. Thank you for discernment. Thank you for making us saved. 
Because without you, without our Lord Jesus Christ, we couldn't be saved. Thank you for the Holy Spirit that teaches us, shows us, leads us, guides us, convicts us. We can't do these things on our own. We need you for this. And you provide abundantly for each of us for these things. Some of us have been in the, the, the throes of battle just recently. And you have given us such great strength to fight these battles. To stand up for what we know is right and not back down. To share your truth as ambassadors. And Father, you have given us the right to be called children of God. And we thank you for giving us that. We thank you for making us your children. Father, help us to understand more. Help us to acknowledge this more. To, to count the blessings. To look and see where you were working. And understand. And when we understand, stop and give thanks. Father, you made this second trip in three weeks uneventful a lot of people say well your life seems very boring and I'm glad for it I'm thankful for it because it is peace and I love it Father please continue to bless us and to protect us and to provide for us and May we continue to give thanks and to praise you and to glorify you and to honor you in all things that we do. Lifting you up in gratitude. Lifting you up in praise. Not just for the physical things, but for the spiritual things. The things that are more important. And that we give thanks that we have a promise and a hope of a future future in you. Thank you, Father, for your mercy and your grace. Thank you for your great love, your free gift of salvation. In the name of Jesus Christ, we bless you. We praise you. We honor you and glorify you. And in the mighty name of our Lord and Savior, we pray. Amen. Guys, thank you for joining me for a morning devotion. It's a simple thing once you come through the threshold and see it. It's a simple thing once you have that breakthrough. I see the Lord working in everything. I am thankful that I have what I have. When they had barely any oil, the Jews gave thanks to the Lord and that oil lasted. I have testimonies in my personal life of similar situations. Thank you for that, Lord, because... A lot of times we're so distracted, we don't get to acknowledge those things and see those things. The Lord make us to see them. Because then you get to give thanks to the Lord for that. Then you get to realize what he's doing for you. There is a lot of stuff that slips past us that we don't stop and give thanks for. Because we don't recognize it's him. Not realizing that it's always him. <laughs> Turn to the Lord and give thanks today. Share with him your joy and gratitude for what he has done. And continues to do for you as his child. And be thankful, so thankful for the spiritual things. The physical things too, because we have need of physical things in this life. We're physical beings. But especially the, the spiritual things, because those are the things we need. And he provides them abundantly. I love you all very much. I bless you all in Jesus' name. And I will see you in the next video.